that we don't live our life here empty and in vain. And though we get tired here, we get frustrated here. And sometimes we get discouraged here. And we feel like sometimes giving up here. We must understand that here is what makes all the difference. If we ever want to see there. You can't give up here. You don't want to lose here. You don't want to take here for granted. Because here is our wilderness. Here is where our hearts are tried and proved by he that created us. Here is where we show him what matters the most in our lives. And as one phrase once said, life is not a, a getting and a receiving, but it's a being and a becoming. It's not always so much of an importance as to what you can get out of life. But many times it's more important as to what you become while you're here. How many people have strived to increase and become recognized and fame and rich or popular or whatever in this world and they pursued their goal. But once they've reached it, everything around them has changed. Sometimes their friends and loved ones will say, you're not the same anymore. Or their success caused them to overlook those who helped them climb up the ladder. The whole character changed. Because in their striving to get and receive, they didn't take heed to themselves as to what they were becoming. And you don't want to become someone that you will later on hate that you reach that peak or obtain that character attitude. You don't want to strive to reach your goals and once you get there then you look back and you see if though there was a, a wildfire, everything behind you was burnt because you burnt everything and everybody to get to where you want to go. They often say it's lonely at the top, but I say it depends on how you get there. If you climb up there right, you'll find out that there's a lot of good fellowship. Because those who helped you, those that were instrumental, you did right about them. Uh -huh. And they were there right there with you. So, let's understand today what matters the most to you. And that is of great importance. You may ask people what matters the most and depends on who's asking them. And some people always try to be politically correct. They want to say the right thing. But Today we want the Lord to look into our hearts and I want you to look into your hearts and to, if you never took time out to think about it, think about it. What means the most? What is the most importance? The scriptures gives us many illustrations concerning 
this, this statement. And there's not necessarily a right or wrong answer. It's just a revealing of you. It goes way back into the heavens. When God created the sons of God and they gave them praise and everything was fine. And there was the anointed cherubim that covered and protected the mountain of God. He was decked in all his jewels and fine. And he was very beautiful. But we found out that what meant most to him was his own beauty. The scripture says he looked at his own brightness and he got caught up in his own beauty. And so he said that I will exalt my throne above the throne of God. I'll be like God and greater than him. And when this iniquity was found in his heart, he was cast down and became known as our number one adversary, Satan, which means adversary. What was more important to him was his own self-exhortation. Somebody says, how can somebody that's got it all blow it? Oh, it can be done. Because he was there. He had a prominent position in the kingdom of God. He was noted. He was known. He was beautiful. But what meant most to him was not the blessing that he received. It was his own ambition. And as a result, he was cast out. Adam saw his wife and she was beautiful to him. And of all the creatures, none pleased him like her. And God gave Adam the word. But when it came down to the test of what's most important to you, Adam chose yielding to his wife and hearkening unto her instead of the word of God. Now she was the one being deceived. And in return, she gave to her husband. But they had the commandment. I don't exactly know how the conversation went. She had the knowledge of good and evil. But he was held accountable for the sin that entered into the world. He was not the first to sin, the woman was. But the woman was not the bloodline. Through her, sin entered into the garden. But everybody that has lived in this world and that will ever live was born in Adam. When Adam was created, we were all there. Every last one of us. That's why we all have something to do with the plan of God. When God put forth his plan from the foundations of the world on the seventh day he rested, he knew everybody that would be born, the part they would play. And he made sure all the characters and actors would be available in Adam. Everybody that would be born, a man has a major role or a minor role to play in God's plan, was born in Adam. So when he made the plans out, guess what? You were included. This is why we can trust in him to show us the way. When Adam, when the woman sinned, sin entered into her. It was in the garden, but just in her. But when Adam sinned, by one man's disobedience, sin entered into the world. Because he is the father and the bloodline of all mankind. Oh, he later on regretted it. But it happened. Then we see God taking coats of skin from an animal and putting it on Adam and Eve. He shed it blood. The soul that sinned must die, but he didn't take that life, but he shed the blood of an animal and clothed them, and thus became, uh, began the institution of sacrificing unto God. Not that he cared about animals, but the sacrifice was like taking the place of man's life, so that he would not necessarily have to die uh, right away and showing God thanksgiving. Well, we found out that when Cain and Abel were born, they too were put in the situation to see what really matters to them. When it came time for an offering at one given day, 
Abel was a shepherd and Cain was a tiller of the ground. Whatever took place, what mattered most to Abel was that he gave God the right sacrifice. But it didn't even matter to Cain, not too tough. He figured that he could give God something. And that was not the most important thing in his mind, how to please God. So when they brought the offerings before God, God acknowledged it and he says, listen, Abel's uh, sacrifice I received, but Cain, I cannot receive it. And in his rebellion, Cain became the first murderer. He killed his brother Abel because of his own deeds were evil. What? He killed Abel because the things that mattered to him the most was of this world. But with Abel, it was to the God that created them. Stop, look, and listen. What matters most to you? What things, what people? Things or people? Noah built the ark. The ark landed on Mount Ararat there in Turkey. And he planted a vineyard. A lot of people want to discuss how in the world he got drunk. Nevertheless, he planted a vineyard. The wine got fermented and he drank a little too much. And he found himself drunk in his own tent. One of his sons came in. They have different teaching on what happened. But what mattered to the son Ham that came in, what mattered to him the most was his own humor. He mocked his father and disrespected him. And then he went back and told his brothers, man, look, let me show you what dad is doing. And when his brothers saw, they took, they saw his father's necklace, they took uh, covering and they went backwards. Because see, what mattered to them the most was the respect for their father, even in his unsoberness. And they covered him. What matters to you the most? They put their father's respect over their moment of folly and laughter. The other brother, what mattered most to him was that he got a good laugh, a good kick, and kick out of it, and whatever else. This story goes on, it goes on. The whole world was corrupt and God was looking for somebody. So, so he, he found a man named Abraham, said, Abraham, I want to give you a chance. What's that, Lord? To decide what means the most to you. What matters to you? Who matters to you? What matters to you the most? Well, what do you want me to do, Lord? I want you to leave everything behind and look for a city whose builder and whose maker is God. Can you do it? What matters to you the most? What people, what things? Can you do it? Abraham did it. He did it. He left it all behind. I feel a small virtue. He left it all behind. And he became known as the friend of God. And then that was, of course, just look at Sarah, his wife. They were barren and they were old and couldn't have a child. And though God promised Abraham that through Sarah, your wife, he, you should bring forth the son. Well, we're old, God said, I'm gonna keep my word. But Sarah, going through the process and uh, having a little mind battles there, she said to herself, listen, what mattered most to her was her husband's happiness. What mattered most to her was that his name would continue not be cut off because Abraham was thinking he'll have to give his inheritance to his servant. But Sarah said, listen, my Lord, take Hagar, my handmaid, that you may have a seed. 
What mattered most to her was not the fact that, hey, she was sour, but my husband cannot go see this. She put Abraham first. And of course, as a result, God honored her. Then they got locked. Am I talking all right? Am I making sense? Are you looking inside your heart to see what matters most to you? And, and the reason how you know this, Bishop, how do we know? Because God will put you in situations whereby you have to make decisions. Make a choice. That's how you know what matters most. And, and, and I feel a virtue. Now listen. And so we have a lot that Abraham grew and God blessed and and and, 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 and it, but even good people sometimes can go to the left. Let me backtrack a little bit. You know, Sarah was very beautiful. And uh, Abraham told her when we travel, if anybody asks you, are you my wife, tell them you're my sister. Now they were, that was before the law came out. They were half brother. They had the same father. The different mothers. So they were half brother and sister, so to speak. They, 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 they were brother and sister. But the law hadn't come then saying that you couldn't marry until Moses. So when he was saying, if I'm correct, we've got the same father with different mothers. When they would find out that, man, this is your wife. Why did you lie to us? But he told Sarah to tell them that you are my wife because you're so pretty. Because they might kill me to get you. Well, at that point, at that moment, what mattered most to Abraham? His safety. <laughs> he was more worried about his safety to the point whereby he would put his wife at jeopardy. Huh? Huh? He was more worried about his well-being to the point whereby he would jeopardize someone else close to him. But God had him. God showed him, you don't have to do that. Because I got you. And when the king, Abimelech, would come and take Sarah, not knowing, not knowing because she said, that's my brother. And when he would get ready to touch her, he'd have a dream. God said, don't you touch that woman. That man's a prophet. And the man would be afraid. He would be afraid. Well, wait, wait. Out of my integrity, I did this. God said, I know, but don't touch her. But Abraham's heart had to be tried that he may learn to trust God more. And he learned through those things because when his son Isaac was born, his only son through Sarah, when God said, I want you to sacrifice and give him back, Abraham didn't hesitate. Because he learned. He learned. Then we trust God. He didn't hesitate. He was willing to do it because he believed that God couldn't lie and that if he took that boy, God would give him back because God said he would be blessed and bless all nations through him. So now we got Abraham, he, he took his nephew Lot. Y'all know that story, right? And God told Abraham, I'm about to destroy all the regions of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, get, your, get, your, get your family out. Lot and his wife and two daughters. Son-in-laws didn't want to come. Uh, we're told to leave. Sometimes even when you're put in the most trying situations, then we learn what matters most to you. What and who? This is not a personal message. If you think it is, it's not. This is what he put in my heart today. Lord, what can I talk to the people? Because see, a lot of times we make decisions. Huh? And in your decisions, it also sometimes shows what matters. And the reason why I say sometimes is because sometimes we are motivated by the wrong presence and spirit in our decision making and it doesn't always show our true heart. I feel the virtue. We might be moved by fear or by anxiety or by depression. And so the decisions we make are not quite real, transparent. That if we were in our full strength and sober mind, we would have never made those decisions. But as a rule, your choices that you make, those inward thoughts, teach you what you measure, what you, uh, what's the phrase I'm using, what matters to you the most. And so Lot, his wife, and his children, 
were leaving. The reason why Lot ended up into Sodom and Gomorrah because his men grew and his cattle and Abraham grew and his, their people would argue. Abraham said it's too big. He said to his nephew, you choose where you want to go. Lot looked at the mountains and the plains. Nah. Then he looked at the green grass and the beautiful cities towards Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and, and Lot said, we're going to go here. Convenience is not always the best policy, huh? And the easy way out is not always the way out. And he went and was there for a while. But the Bible says, because of the sin that went on in, in those surroundings, that Lot, the righteous man Lot was vexed every day because of the sin that kept on. He was vexed. He didn't communicate. He didn't hang with them. He was vexed. That's why when he saw the two men coming in, not knowing they were angels, he ran to them quickly and said, listen, you all don't know what good you in. You need to come on into my house where you'll be safe. But the word was the city is about to be destroyed. Now, nice home. Everything is set. Oh, they, they living good. Now they have to give it up. When? Now. They had to give it up when? Now. You got to get out now. Lottie's wife and two daughters, they took out. Don't look back. But in a time like this, sometimes when you get caught unexpectedly, you really try it. Isn't that right? And guess what? Lot kept walking. His daughters kept walking. But what mattered most to Mrs. Lot was what she was leaving behind. And that situation proved it. She turned back, and that was the last they saw of her. You know, to some people, what matters most to you are the things you have, rather than the people you should love. What matters to a lot of people is what they can get out of whoever and whatever. I'd rather lose you than lose this or that. You know, some people act like that doesn't happen. But Locke couldn't look back. He had to choose what matters most, obeying God or Moses was brought up in the house of Pharaoh. He was well trained and according to Josephus, he was a man of war too in his youth. Very intelligent and very smart. He led several war campaigns and was victorious to the point where some of them became jealous of him. It was during this time, according to Josephus, he married the Ethiopian wife before he ever knew the power. But he was strong. But when he thought that the people would know that he would be the deliverer, he killed an Egyptian. And when he found out that uh, Pharaoh might hear about it, he ran for his life. But the Bible said something, son, about Moses. Moses was presented with what matters most to you. What's more important? What things or what people? And the scripture said this, that Moses chose to suffer affliction with the people of God. He chose to wander in that wilderness with those people. He chose the Hebrew slaves that were told, being raised by his own mother, that these are your people. When he saw the Egyptians fighting the Hebrew, and he slew the Egyptian. Moses was at that time still known as the son of Pharaoh. But right there, he chose, listen, this is my people. And he chose to suffer affliction with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. And the house of Pharaoh. I feel the virtue. He turned all that down 
because what was most important to him was his people and God's people. What's most important to you? What matters most to you? It is revealed sometimes in the choices and the decisions you make and the inner feelings you hold within yourself. That was the choice he made. When young Elijah was following Elijah, Elijah asked the young prophet, what's, what's most important to you? What means the most to you? And the young prophet said, you and the God you serve. I want a double portion of your power. Well, if you can keep up with me, you're asking for something hard, but if you can keep up with me, God again. So the prophet took on. Everywhere he went, the young prophet was behind him. And then he told the young prophet, sit here while I go over there. But the young prophet would get up and follow him again. He'd get to another city and he would say, sit here, you stay here and I'm going to go over here. But the young prophet would follow him again. And wherever they went, there were other young prophets around. They would say to young Elijah, you know, your master's going to be taken up today. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I don't want to hear everywhere I go. Everybody tell me, I know, I know, I know. I, I hate that it's happening, but uh, wait a minute, he's gone. I got to go. Man, why can't you sit there and talk? He's going to be taken up because what most, what means most to me, what matters to me the most is that I get what he got. that I serve God like him. I'll talk to you people later. I have to make a decision. And he followed him and until the witness from heaven came. So the whirlwind, I believe it was chariot, so that whirlwind came down scooped up the old man. See, what God's got for you is for you. You can't get what belongs to somebody else. He knows what you're praying for, right? right. Well, Elijah was being translated, so Elijah had to stay put. That's not, that, that was a myth for him, not the translation, but the double portion was. And he took the old man up and the young boy cried, my father, my father, uh, the horsemen of Israel and the chariots of oh, something like that. Wait, 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 what? And then out of the wind, as Elijah disappeared, his cloak, his mantle came. <laughs> Elijah didn't take an attitude. What in the world is this? Because he believed in his heart that he would get what he asked for. They had came across the water with the old man, the old man hit the water and the waters went up and they walked across on dry ground. You see, don't commit yourself to something that ain't gonna go all the way. Yeah. You understand? I feel the virtue. He, he, you can say what means most to you. You can say what really matters in your heart. huh? But when you gotta split the water and walk across on the dry ground on the way back it's the same way you came, now we're gonna find out. If you're willing to go with the, if you're willing to go through the struggles and, 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 and stand the test for that, with that, whatever it may be. He hit the ground, waters came across, and everybody saw both of them walk across on dry ground. Because he told the boy, you keep up with me. Now this was a final test. Because how the boy gonna get back after the old man is gone? And they walked up, and Elijah was taken up. His mantle came down. Lord, all that matters to me is that I be like him and have the power of God and be connected with you. I'm not worried about anything else, but this is what's most important to me. And I want to show it in the life I live and the words I speak. And he came down, and he picked up that mantle. First thing he said, anybody know? Anybody know the story? What did he say? 
Where is it? God! Of Elijah. And he took that metal without hesitation, turned back toward the banks of that river. Woo! The waters poured in and he went catwalking. The God that was with Elijah is with Elijah now because what mattered the most to him, he was true to it. He was faithful to it. His choice was to follow God. What's your choice? I'm trying to get you to understand what means the most to you, your job, your home, your clothes, your own self-esteem. What means the most to you? What about the people around you? Anybody matter? Or are you happy because they're making you feel good? And the minute they're not making you feel good, you're, you're, you're uncomfortable. Something ain't right. Oh, my Lord. Go home. Let me close it. Go home. Everybody's dead. Go. I've got nothing else to offer you. Okay, mommy, I'll see you later. You go. Go home, it's all right. Darling, you go too. Go home, baby, go. You go home. Go. Go. Go, mommy, don't push me. Baby, go. I got nothing, I'm old. I got nothing else to offer you. Mama, don't push me. Well, baby, I don't have anything else. What means most to me, mama, what matters the most to me is you. Let your people be my people. Let your God be my God. I'm willing to forsake my whole land. They want me to stay with you. But Ruth, you don't have to. But this, this is what matters to me. This is what matters to me. You and your God. I'm making a choice and I'm leaving all that I am behind because what matters the most to me is you, your God. Let your people, as the songwriter said, let your people be my people. Let your God be my God. And wherever you go, I will follow. Wherever you lay your head, I'll lay mine. And she did just that and went down into history. What's most important to you? What matters the most to you? When they built the golden calf and sinned, Moses went down there. And God was angry. And Moses stood. And he said, who's on the Lord's side? What he really was saying was, what matters most to you people today? What thing, what people, what, what, what's most important in your life? That's what I'm trying to say. What's most important in your life? And, and everybody that's on God's side, come up. And a lot of the Levites, they came. A lot of people came and stood behind Moses, not knowing what was next. Be careful when you say, oh, that matters, you matter, it matters. Be careful because you don't know what comes next. You're going to be trying. We want you, Moses. We want God. Everybody came up. We're on Moses' side. Moses said, put the swords on, huh? He said, everybody get down there and fall on your brother, your, your, your cousin, your mama, your sister. Huh? What matters most to you? God's will or what? And that's what they had to do. Oh, oh my God, I feel the virtue. Could you imagine that relative looking at him? Are you serious? Hey, he means most to me. Wait, 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 wait. You couldn't be serious. I don't have a choice. I have to decide what matters most to me. Doing God's will matters most to me. Being accepted by God means most to me. If it means I have to separate from you. What matters most?
friends, loved ones, things are your own image. Your own image. Some people's image means more to them than anything, even if it makes you look bad. Young people, young people, young people, you ever have friends? Uh, everything cool? But when other friends come around, they start acting funny. Now you see then what means most to them, what matters most to them is the way they look in the eyes of others. Even if it means hurting you. Lord, help me to be sober in the things that matter most to me. Let them be sober, righteous judgments and choices. And help us to those whom we love, let it be made known that they matter. That we love. And then help us to be honest with ourselves because, because, because a lot of our measure of love and where we say it is, Oh, it may look like a love affair, but sometimes people love you because you're there. Remove yourself for some reason and they love changes. Well, why do you love changing? I haven't heard from you, I haven't seen you, I haven't listened to you. Whoa, 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 whoa. So your love for me is not embedded in the heart. It's only based on what I can do. You see, when you're somebody that needs a crutch, you need somebody to lean on, to be there. That ain't real love all the time because see, whoever fits the description, that's the person. Because what they're looking for is for them to give what you need, 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 what you need. And as long as they can give you what you need, what you need, you're satisfied. Oh, I love you, but it's based on what you need, what you need. But the minute they can't give you what you need, what you need, you start backing up. Because what means most to you, what matters most to you is not them, but it's what you can get from them. Oh, somebody say, be quiet. Somebody say, I can't. I gotta tell you. I love you, don't mean they necessarily love you. They might love what they get out of you. Because what matters most to them is them being satisfied with or without you. Anybody can fill in that gap. They can do it and say, hey, you got the job. You got the job. What matters most to you? Jesus, for this cause I came, for this cause I came to give my life for me. What matters most to me is that I provide salvation for everyone. Why, 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 why? You've been rejected, Lord. Why don't you just leave these folks alone? Because what matters to me the most is that they know that God loves them. I came here for this cause, and I'm going to finish it. I gave my own life. I sacrificed my own life. Some people think the grass is greener on the other side. They can't wait to get on that side. Examine yourself. What matters the most to you? Because your heart will certainly be tried. He's going to make sure your heart is tried to see what matters most. Some people have got bad ways, and you know your ways ain't right. And you heard everybody that try to love you, try to help you, but yet you won't even change. Why? Because what matters most to you is not how you treat others, but whatever you think you can get.
say, Jesus. Yeah. Hey, we got a Pharisee here. What time is it? About 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night. Well, you know, if he comes in by night, he must be a man of reputation. So the gentleman comes in there, looks around, who's watching me go in. He says, hey, hey, Jesus. Now, we know that you are a man that comes from God. Because the things you do can't be done except God be with him. And Jesus said, hold on, Nicodemus. You must be born again. That's all I got to tell you. How, how can a man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus said, you don't know these things and you are a master in Israel. Except a man be born again or born in the spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You can't even see the kingdom of God. That's why I say you must be born again. The wind bloweth where the wheel and it listens where it goes. And nobody knows from which it comes where it goes. So is every man born of spirit. He goes. Now he's back with the Pharisees and they're arguing. We need to kill him. We need to get him. Oh, Nicodemus had to decide what may, what matters most to him. Being a part of the Sahedrin, being a man of reputation, being accepted by his friends, all oh, wanting to really be a real rabbi who loves God for real. Nicodemus, make a decision. You talk to the man yourself. Oh, Nicodemus said, but wait, 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 And if I'm correct, he was there helping to bury him, was that right? Why are you here? We want the body of Jesus. Nicodemus, you're a Pharisee. I made a mistake, God. What matters most to me is that I please God. Not everybody around me. But give us the body. I don't care who knows it. All my life, I've always stood with the other dog. I told my older brother one day, I said, you know, I haven't done all things right. At least he said this. He said, well, nine out of ten times, if you've ever been in any trouble, he says, most of the time, it's because you went down and tried to pull somebody out. He said, because all your life, Larry, you always stood with the other dog. All the kids that everybody else didn't like might, might throw a little, what they called it back there on the birthday party. Everybody said, we ain't going, we ain't going, I didn't really go to the party. Larry, you going to the party? I said, yeah, I'm going. Well, why are you going? They ain't did nothing to me. I ain't from the side with y'all drink over there. I had a guitar player, a nice little guy. <laughs> he couldn't play. But he wanted to play in every band I played in. They would say, they would push him, get, get out of here. Go inside his head for a nurse and don't try to touch him. Man, he can't play. I said, he can play on this side by me. So I'd have him sit down with his guitar, right? Plugged into the amplifier and turn it down. And he does a jam. But he was just so glad to be up there, you see? He does a jam and wasn't playing nothing. To but I wouldn't let him push him aside. Because what mattered most to me was his self-esteem. Those other children's self-esteem. Oh, they were trying to jump on this one guy one day. Some of the gangsters wanted to jump on him. But nobody knew him to get him down to the parking lot at Target. So I said, I'll get him good with him. And I get him down there. They said, cool, MP. I had a little friend who was kind of psychic. He said, no, nah, man, you ain't going to do it. I said, why come I ain't going to do it? Your heart. I know you're tough and all, but you got two chin up a heart, man. You ain't gonna do it. Say, man, get out of here. So I got to talking to the guy, find out he was the only child, living with his mom. And, uh, you know, he came up from the other side and how many friends. He was telling me how they want to jump on him and stuff. I said, man, I, I stand by you. But I'm the setup, see? And so when we got down there, 
Everybody was in the West. The gangsters were there. And they said, come on, man, let's do it. And he had a blue sweater. He said, let me take my sweater off. And somebody said, I'll hold it. He said, no. And he looked at me. He said, let him hold it. Oh. I guess my psychic friend was right. My heart just, oh, oh. The fight got on. The boy could take care of himself a little bit, and he hit one of the gangster guys pretty hard. They found out something else too. If you know anything about the hundred yard dash, he did like a 10-5 in the hundred. <laughs> but he could run. <laughs> we found out he could run, and uh, there, uh, and he, he got a good punch. And he started coming at him. And he started running toward me. And everybody was glad because the LP got him. I had the blue sweater. He come running toward me. And everybody glad because we got him now, the LP. And when he got toward me, LP said, Come on, some red people. I said, run, buddy, run. I found my way over to his house. I said, here, man. We were about 13, 14. I said, here's the sweater. He was sitting up there watching Batman. We became best of friends, and they never messed with him again. Because what mattered to me the most was his self-esteem. I found the guy to be all right. Anybody here found to be all right? That you stand with? He refused to stop loving. For you to turn your back no matter what. We were taking on the best of friends. And so sometimes, when y'all going through some trials, if you ever called on me in the worst of a situation, then to your surprise, I didn't put my foot in your neck, it's because what I think most important to me was your soul salvation and not what you did, but how we can fix it. What matters most to you? Who, what? Examine yourself in the decisions and choices that you make. Examine yourself. What matters most to you? What? You're the most important person in your life, or the others that you esteem higher than you. You put your pride over the respect of others or the emotions of others. I had a debate with a young preacher. He got mad because his wife received the Holy Ghost. And he had come from another church and we, I didn't expect it, but we got into a debate right there in his home and he was so far off and everything in me wanted to blast him out and come at him, but I didn't because his wife and children. And I didn't, even though I held him and showed him his error, he kept them in the other room because he didn't want them to come up to the church because he didn't expect them to get saved like that. You see? So instead of me attacking him, I didn't. And it took everything in me just to keep it straight and stay home and just talk the word and then leave. Somebody said, why did you do that? Because I esteemed the respect for his wife and children of him over than me making it, making it known that I'm right and him breaking him down. See, he got to continue to take care of them. So I swallowed my pride and I took the rules so that his children wouldn't come out and his wife looked at him like he was a devil or something. So he got the Holy Ghost of God got us, he'll find a way. But I'm not gonna let his children see me coming down on him like that. And I walked out and that's when God taught me, when you got power, don't abuse it. Because you get mad, you don't misuse it. Back in my rough days, I was in a place where I shouldn't have been. And a gang came in. 
let her down, but she was a fool. They were about to take this boy's life because some, something had come up missing, and the boy was guilty because I saw it firsthand. He didn't know I saw it. But it was just a little, little play sometimes I would do just to chill. And the establishment knew me and respected me. And when I perceived that they were going to hurt this boy, I esteemed that young boy, though he was foolish, I esteemed his life more important than my reputation. I politely got up and I walked into to that little room hall. And all I did was lean up against the wall. And I stared. The head man, not knowing why I'm in there, but thinking that I came in defense of the little boy, or younger boy, he changed his old tune. I'm not trying to say you did anything, but if you know, if you miss Some people were asking me questions, how, how you doing? They called me by my nickname, I ain't gonna tell it. How, how you doing? So and so, I'm all right. Hey, so and so, what's going on? I'm doing fine. But not all I'm trying to say, and they all walked out one by one. And I said to myself, Lord, I'm not sure. I said, this boy don't know I just saved his life. And I didn't say nothing to the kid. I just turned around and walked out. And when I walked out, he was on the food table, son. He looked up and he called me by my nickname. He said, so-and-so. I said, yes, son. He said, thanks. I couldn't let that go down. But I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. All my reputation tarnished. But I put his life more important. You see? But if they hadn't took him out, he'd went to hell somehow. And in return, he showed appreciation. I'm gonna have to say by the grace of God. Never saw him no more, and they never saw me no more. What matters most to you? You? Above everything, anybody? Or are you concerned? As the scripture says, look not after your own welfare, but look after the welfare of others. Amen? Let not everybody be just concerned about how they doing, about is your neighbor doing all right? Your loved ones all right? How your brothers and sisters feeling? Do they have? Be considered. Precious God, we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, let, ooh, let us stand for the right things. Let us be strong and stand in the for what's right. I said, Mama, let me sit you down. And I've been preaching for a while, but I had some ups and downs. I said, let me tell you some things I've been through. And she said, so we didn't talk much. She was baptized in this ministry. She said, baby, don't worry about it. I said, ma'am. She says, Larry. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, you're good. I'll wear your bad by far. She esteemed most important, not on me to try to be honest and making a profession, but that her son, whom she see come through a lot of things, would be strong and keep his self-esteem. It ain't always how many words you say as it is what you say, how you say it, and when you say it. And she didn't say much, but when she spoke, it made all the difference. And for some of you, I want to tell you, you're good, I believe you're bad, my friend. It's all right, but what matters most to you? What matters, who matters? It's for you to decide. Give a little head clap off. Thank you. Little words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable. Oh Lord, let the words of my mouth. The meditations of my heart be 
and mama. So people that they matter. So people that they matter. So that they matter. Let the words meditate silence. I said. Yeah.